Good morning, my friends. We want to welcome you to our Wednesday morning time of reflection and our time of Bible study together. And in particular, we welcome you on this day when we continue to talk about stewardship. And it's going to be great today because the theme around which we want to focus on this day is how do connections revitalize? How do our connections revitalize? We're going to talk about what it means to be connected. And our guest today is someone that many of you will recognize. It's our own Bruce Williams. Let me say that Bruce and his wife Carmen have been members of this church since 2005. And over the years, they have participated in many, many church activities. And Bruce, in particular, has led many Bible studies. And also, he is the chair of our church council. And some of you will recognize him from that, certainly. I also want to point out that uh, Musical Gifts of Inspiration aired yesterday at 11 a.m. So if you have not had a chance to tune in on that, please do that. And I also want to indicate that we have some new Bible studies going. And on Sunday morning at 11 a.m., you can join Jeff Firm's class. They're doing a study of the book of Romans, and this is by Zoom. And also next week on Thursday, there's another Zoom class led by Dana Cheney and Mary Kilgrove, and they're going to be dealing with some controversial aspects of end times and the whole idea of when did Jesus return and if he did already, and that's going to prick some of your minds to want to know more. So join Dana and Mary as they lead in that study, and that's going to be at 10 a.m., and that's going to start on Thursday the 18th. If you need more information about that, please call the church office. And now let us move ahead in our worship today. And Bruce, it's so glad to have you with us. Glad to be here, Pastor. Good to have Hope you Hope I here. can help add a little bit of the, to the discussion today. I'm sure you will. Yeah. Get us on the straight and narrow, okay? <laughs> <laughs> or the pretty straight and the pretty narrow. Okay. <laughs> All right. Please join with us in our call to worship. Life can seem shrouded in mystery. O Lord, lift the veil of our misunderstanding that we may see your light. We are eager to serve. O Lord, calm our spirits and patiently prepare us for service. Look to the Lord for mercy and comfort. We look to the Lord for healing and hope. Amen. Join with me, please, in our opening prayer. How awe-inspiring it is that you care for us, God of all life. Your delight in us brings out our best. When you rejoice in us, we come to believe in our capacity for goodness. When your light and salvation dawn in our lives, we want to share the joy Remind us now of the gifts that you so freely bestow. Help us to recognize them in ourselves and in one another, that we may use them to serve people in need and give glory to your name. Amen. I'm reading from the Hebrew Bible. The reading is from Jeremiah 31, verses 31 through 34. The day is coming, says the Lord, when I make a new covenant with the people of Israel and Judah. This covenant will not be like the one I made with their ancestors when I took them by hand and brought them out of Egypt. They broke that covenant, though I love them as husband loves his wife, says the Lord. But this is the new covenant I will make with the people of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my instructions deep within them. I will write them on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. And they will not need to teach their neighbors, nor will they need to teach their relatives, saying, You should know the Lord, for everyone, from the least to the greatest, will know me already, says the Lord. And I will forgive their wickedness, and I will never again remember their sins. The reading from the Psalter today is Psalm 19. 
and Pastor Daniel and myself will read this responsively. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display his craftsmanship. Day after day, they continue to speak. Night after night, they make him known. They speak without a sound or word. Their voice is never heard. Yet their message has gone throughout the earth, and their words to all the world. God has made a home in the heavens for the sun. It bursts forth like a radiant bridegroom after his wedding. It rejoices like a great athlete eager to run the race. The sun rises at one end of the heavens and follows its course to the other end. Nothing can hide from its heat. The instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The commandments of the Lord are right, bringing joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are clear, giving insight for living. Reverence for the Lord is pure, lasting forever. The laws of the Lord are true. Each one is fair. They are more desirable than gold, even the finest gold. They are sweeter than honey, even honey dripping from the comb. They are a warning to your servant, a great reward for those who obey them. How can I know all the sins lurking in my heart? Cleanse me from these hidden faults. Keep your servant from deliberate sins. Don't let them control me. Then I will be free of guilt and innocent of great sin. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. It is always good to have a time of confession and a time of personal renewal, especially when we worship in the spirit of our Lord and Savior. And so we take time to do that right now. Hear our call to confession. Despite our best intentions, there is much in life that separates us from you, O Lord. We find ourselves living for things and being ruled by our limited vision. Our narrowed view of your kingdom enables us to create misguided idols that prevent us from taking risks and making sacrifices of faithfulness. Please join with me in our prayer of confession. God of both holy and the unholy, we confess that we have moved away from our commitment to Christ. We have denied your gifts, ignored your inspiration, and wandered from your healing presence. Yet we cannot escape your claim on us, for wherever we go, you are there. How precious is your steadfast love that saves us from our self-centered dispositions to live for higher values. Strengthen us to do so as you guide us, as Christ demonstrated among us. Amen. And what each of you need to know on this day is that what has been given to you is the light of love and ministry that has been revealed to you. So rejoice. You have been blessed by God to be witnesses, to proclaim God's love to all. And so be at peace. Amen. My friends, as Christ has forgiven us, we are to forgive others. <clears throat> In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you too are forgiven. Praise to God who has triumphed gloriously. Amen. The reading from the epistle is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 31. The human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves, and some are free. But we have all been baptized into one body by one spirit. 
and we all share the same spirit. Yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. If the foot says, I am not a part of the body because I am not a hand, that does not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear says, I am not part of the body because I am not an eye, would that make it any less a part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? <clears throat> or if your whole body were an ear, how would you smell anything? But our bodies have many parts, and God has put each part just where he wants it. How strange a body would be if it had only one part. Yes, there are many parts, but only one body. The eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. The head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. In fact, some parts of the body that seem weakest and least important are actually the most necessary. And the parts we regard as less honorable are those we clothe with the greatest care. So we carefully protect those parts that should not be seen. While the more honorable parts do not require this special care. So God has put the body together such that extra honor and care are given to those parts that have less dignity. This makes for harmony among the members so that all the members care for each other. If one part suffers, all the part suffers with it. And if one part is honor, all the parts are glad. All of you together are Christ's body, and each of you is a part of it. Here are some of the parts God has appointed for the church. First, apostles. Second, are prophets. Third, are teachers. Then those who do miracles. Those who have the gift of healing. Those who can help others. Those who have the gift of leadership. Those who speak in unknown languages. Are we all apostles? Are we all prophets? Are we all teachers? Do we all have the power to do miracles? Do we all have the gift of healing? Do we all have the ability to speak in unknown languages? Do we all have the ability to interpret unknown languages? Of course not. So you should earnestly desire the most helpful gifts. But now, let me show you a way of life that is best of all. And of course, if you continue on with the next chapter, it goes into the great love chapter that we read in 1 Corinthians 13, which is not included. Daniel, thank you for reading that long passage. Uh, that's about as long as a sermon. I actually thought, well, which of us should read that today? So I flipped a coin, and by golly, Daniel won. I won. You won. All right. But it is a great passage that speaks to us about so many things. So I invite you now just to join with me for a moment in the spirit of prayer. Gracious God, full of mercy and love, who calls us to transform scarcity and fear into abundance and peace, give us generous and loving hearts to see the splendor of your reign, that we may live in truth and honor and praise you for the transformation of our lives. Loving Jesus, who walks with us, in the power of the Spirit. You come to save us in all times and places, offering us new life in your presence. Help us to receive your gift of faith so that the soil into which you sow your word may produce abundant fruit. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we are to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. And so pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the grace of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The reading from the gospel is John chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. I am the true grapevine, and my father is the gardener. 
He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit. And he prunes the branches that do bear fruit, so they will produce even more. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. This ends the lesson. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be, Thanks to, God. be, Thanks to, God. be to God. Amen. As we think further into our theme of stewardship, we often don't recognize that stewardship has many, many different aspects. As we pointed out last week, sometimes people think of stewardship just in terms of money. And when they think of church stewardship, they often limit it by thinking of how much does the church want me to give or what should I give to the church in terms of financial resources. But as we talked about last week and as we further explore today, the whole theme of stewardship encompasses a lot more. And it's about our connections. It's about our faith. It is about our resources, but our resources are a lot more than money. It's about our prayer, our, our time. It's about our presence. It's about a whole range of things. And of course, stewardship is also about community. And so today we're thinking specifically about connections. And I've asked Bruce to come in to maybe reflect a little bit from his experience and to reflect from his time in the church about the importance of connections to him. And so, Bruce, I'm going to start with you and just let you take it however you want to go. What about stewardship do we need to know? Uh, my my uh, opinion of stewardship has been with me ever since I've been young. But as I grew into my older years and learned that it's not just the, the uh, amount of money that you give, but it's also the amount of time that you can contribute to it. And if you've got talents, the amount of talents, the number of talents that you can give. Uh, just since we've been here, and this is, we've done so many things before we even came here, but I'll talk about what we've done since we've been here. Um, myself, personally, I have taught uh, Bible studies, but my wife and I together, enjoy more than anything finding people that we can talk to and ask to come to church. And it's so, uh, makes you feel so good when you get one of those people and they come to church and they sit with you in the pew and then pretty soon they ask their neighbor and they're sitting in the pew next to you. That's one of the things that we really enjoy doing and going and visiting the people. We carry communion to the people around the church and that is very rewarding thing that I like to do most of all is carry the communion and a song book that I put together with all the favorite songs that people like. I got about five of them and we take them with us and when we go visit people I bring my guitar and we sing and sometimes all the people that are there in the little nursery or wherever it's at they all come and join That's and true. that is rewarding and that lets people know more about what we are here at Velder Rose. And I think that's probably the best thing that we do. Uh, wife you talk about building connections. Yes. When you do that, oh my goodness. It, it, it just, it's a rewarding feeling, that's all I can say about it. The, uh, the amount of money that you give is, is very important, but it's not as important as having the strong <clears throat> feeling of having more people come and see the real, true meaning of the Word of God. And they get that right here in this sanctuary. Uh, I can talk more about my past. I helped uh, build a church when I came back from New Jersey on business. I came back and got a new home in, uh, in Illinois. And there was a new church that was being started in a library, a school library. Mm. And I saw the sign out there, and uh, since I was by myself, I stopped in and uh, started talking to them. And the next thing you know, this was a Presbyterian church. Next thing I know, I'm on the session. And we started 
building a church. We got enough people as the church to build a building. And that was very rewarding too. That uh, uh, things like that just make you really feel good because you've done something for the community, not yeah. just yourself. Yeah, right. And uh, since then, I met my wife, Carmen, and uh, we had a little discussion over Presbyterian Church and Methodist Church, and she won. <laughs> she, uh, she convinced me, and <clears throat> before I knew it, I was a liturgist at the church. And the next thing I know, we're out singing and going to all the people around the, <laughs> around the church that needed yeah. us. But that, that's my connection feeling, the way to connect with people. Well, that's, that's beautiful. It really is. And uh, you just said so much in, in, in your words. I'd, I'd personally like to know how your wife convinced you. Okay, well, you did your comparison. <laughs> Not between... very hard. <laughs> So I'll make no allusions to the Presbyterian Church, Daniel. I'll just keep, keep this on the up and up here. But um, that's, that is great. But, but getting involved, bringing your gifts, being a part of a whole group of people that were, were connected. And what was the center of that connection for you? Was it, was it faith? Was it an awareness that you were doing something for God? I mean, what, I mean the social part is always important, but what, what was the glue, would you say? Uh, for going to the new church, that that was pretty simple because the people around you gathered to you and connected with you as soon as you walked through the door. That's one of the things that I liked about this church when we came here. It is the friendliest church I have ever been to in my life. You walk to that, up to that front door and there's going to be at least two people on each door greeting you and saying welcome to this church. Yep. And that's that's one of the best things that we have to offer here. Show hospitality, love is the biggest thing we can do. And we've always been a church, uh, open heart, open minds, and open times. Yeah, that's right. There, there are no frozen chosen in no. the rose, okay? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> no frozen chosen. <laughs> Daniel, what would you add from your experience around, around that, about connections? Um, <clears throat> Uh, at the previous, before coming to Belle de Rose, uh, my family and I were appointed at another church uh, here in the greater Phoenix Valley. And uh, because of one of my sons, uh, he had two friends um, in junior, in high school that were going to, his two friends were going to be, uh, uh, become Eagle Scouts and they were going to have the ceremony and, 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 and what have you. Um, these friends would come over to the house uh, uh, um, occasionally, and we got to know them, they got to know us. When they were going to have their official uh, presentation as Eagle Scouts, they asked if I could uh, come and say a few words. Um, uh, I did, we did, we came over, and it was uh, at a park. There was a lot of people there, a lot of food. I didn't know most of them except the two kids, high school kids and their families, and I didn't know the families very well. But because of that opportunity that was given to us to be able to connect with the parents and the family, two, three months later, an opportunity came where they wanted to have further conversations with me regarding a challenge that that particular family was, was having. The result of that is that we built a friendship and they came to visit our church and they invited the other family of the other young man that had become an Eagle Scout to come and visit because after all mm -hmm. my son is, mm -hmm. is there and go visit the youth group and, I, and I, I, I realized that connections sometimes they come to you in unexpected ways the opportunities to initiate them and to continue to to cultivate them um, I think what what Bruce shares with regards to the joy that you and your wife have when you go visit someone and you uh, engage with them uh, and afterwards you invite them to come to church and the joy that you see that you experience when you see them here because of that simple invitation that now you see them in, in worship with you at your church. Uh, I, to me, that is also uh, one of the greatest joys that I get to see. Yep. That, that, is, that is so true, and, and the power of worship then becomes remarkable. And, of course, 
That's what we've all been missing during this season of COVID, and we bring to you the best that we can bring through the online, and that takes a lot of time and a lot of work, more than most people realize. But nonetheless, we are looking forward to coming back to worship when we can be gathered and we can look at each other eyeball yes. to eyeball. Yes, even, yes, 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 yes. Even yes. though we may have a mask on, okay, it'll be eyeball to eyeball, and we can connect. I mean, human beings are made and built to connect yes. face to face, not just through high-tech equipment. And so hang in there and hang with us, folks. Uh, like, we're like moving you, toward it. Go ahead. Like you said earlier, and you also touched upon this last week, last Wednesday, that the body of Christ is made up of many members. So when those new people, those visitors come in, they don't see that, that the pastors are the ones that also play the instruments and are the ones that also get to sing and lead in the song. They're not the ones that are the ushers or the greeters or offering the hospitality for that. Yeah, that's right. The body has many parts. Yes. And everybody in the Church of Christ has an equal status. None are better than another. Yes. We sometimes, as human beings, we try to rank people and categorize them and, and put them in tiers. But the truth is, is that before God, as we come together to, to worship in the free grace of Jesus Christ, we are all equal, my friends, and we need to remember that. We're all equally valuable in the sight of God. I wanted, I wanted to say a brief word about how the Bible invites us into connection. And the Bible really is a book of connections. And when you go back to the very creation of the world, you look at God's work in bringing about the world. And he created the world. And he said, this is good. It's a good creation. And he gave things a proper place. And we know about that. We've learned about that as human beings and just living and, and working together. But all the way through the Bible, God is always attempting to build new connections. We may think that we find God, but the truth is, is that God finds us. Yes. God is seeking after us all the time. And in those passages that we read earlier, when Bruce read Jeremiah, that was about God reaching out to establish a new covenant with the people. He was, God was looking down the road. It didn't happen overnight, but that's a powerful passage. So take some, not some time and, and read that again as we read there about the new covenant, about what is coming as God invites people into a new kind of a relationship. And of course, we find that in the book of Ezekiel. We find that in many of the prophets, actually, but then finally in the life and death and teachings of Jesus Christ. And of course, the Psalm 19 talks about our connection with God and that the ground of everything is God and God's love and God's faithfulness Hesed, a great word, a Hebrew word, which means God's steadfast love. And that comes out so strongly in Psalm 19. And then finally in this passage from John, and I'm going to open it here for just a moment for conversation, but where Jesus says to the disciples in those last hours, I am the vine and you are the branches. You talk about connection. Mm -hmm. that we find our life <clears throat> as we are rooted in, in Jesus Christ. And that's just not about me being rooted in Christ. It's about all of us being rooted in Christ. And so therefore we are rooted in one another. It's a powerful, powerful metaphor. And that metaphor, along with Paul's powerful metaphor of the body of Christ and the parts of the body and how they interconnect, this says so much to what we need to remember in this day and age of, of fragmentation and conflict. What would you guys say to that? Mm. Throw in your two cents. <laughs> or three. <laughs> I think that <clears throat> as a pastor, being appointed at another church before coming to Velda Rose, um, you bring those relationships with you, you bring those joys with you, you bring those memories with you um, to your new church. Um, but 
I, I remember after a month, uh, my wife Delia and I, we were in the office after worship on a Sunday afternoon. And we stayed there for about an hour to catch up on different things. And, and uh, you were also there, Pastor Larry, uh, 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 with your wife. <clears throat> and you asked me, you asked both Delia and I, and you said, hey, guys, uh, how do you feel? Uh, you've been here a month. How does it feel to be here at Velda Rose? And our response to you was, we're at home. Yeah, I remember that. This is home. Yep. The people in this congregation made us feel welcome, very friendly, very warm, very receiving to us. And <clears throat> we honestly felt at home being here at Velda Rose United Methodist Church after a month. We knew that this was the place to be because there was a sense of connectedness from the congregation, from the leaders in the, as the ushers and, and the greeters, uh, as we would walk into the sanctuary. We would experience that also from the musicians, from the worship team, from the choir. <clears throat> Being connected, I, th I think as the United Methodists that we are, even nationally, we're known for being a church of connectionalism, That's right. That's of being right. connected. And I've experienced that <clears throat> having traveled, for example, with the Foundation for Evangelism. If I, as, as I travel to Lake John, Alaska, North Carolina, Asheville, what have you, and we go to worship in different congregations. I've never been there to begin with, and yet the people welcome me like if I'm a member of their congregation. Because yeah. as Methodists, we are connected yeah that's I can put a play in there just once for um, the United Methodist men here yeah. we actually do the same thing uh, the men get together and they have a meal or a breakfast or something like that and they invite other people to come other men to come in and sit and see what we're doing and gradually if we get that person to come more than once we've got him and he's hooked because we've always got something going on at the church that we're taking care of. And it's good that that happens because then you have another member in the church and he brings his family then. That's right. Exactly. That's another way of I see things happening around here that's for the, for the good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bruce, we live, we live in a time when there's a lot of talk about um, um, United Methodist Church changing and it's going to change. We, we think that's probably a pretty self-evident thing. And some even talk about changes occurring here at, at Val de Rose. And we always have to be adaptable and accommodate to what's happening to a certain degree. But what, what would you miss if Val de Rose, this community of faith, we're imagining all of you now sitting out here, if this community of faith were no longer here, what would you miss? And just that, I'd miss the relationship between all the members that we have here. I'd miss the activities that we do, the learning process that we have by going to Bible studies, whatever they were, and just the enjoyment of having friends that you see on Sunday morning. It's kind of hard to even think that they wouldn't be here. Yeah, it is. Yeah. We'd miss the connections. Yes. We'd miss the community of faith, the body of Christ. <clears throat> and the wonderful opportunities God has given us to be in ministry and mission together and, and that we'll have as we move into the future as well. Any final thoughts from either one of you? Daniel? That's a <laughs> tough question. <laughs> <laughs> I think Bruce answered it fairly easy. <laughs> Uh, you you kind of got to the point. Yes, yes. Um, I, th I think that um, we touched up on, as human beings, we are created uh, in, in, in wanting to have relationship with others. And, and I think the yearning in our heart is for having a relationship with, with God, having a relationship with Jesus Christ. Having a relationship with others is where we get to see different sides of, of Jesus. We get to see different, uh, we have opportunities to be able to learn from different experiences in the lives of others that bring about growth in us. I think I would miss that tremendously. 
that I'm not able to be stimulated by the life experience in the journey of faith by someone else in this congregation if we were no longer able to exist yeah. as a community of faith. You know, we talk about connections. And uh, I think one of the biggest connections that this church has to offer is this marvelous, fantastic music program that we have here. You come through the church and the choir's singing, the organ's playing, the piano's going, and you never know somebody's going to come out here with a bass and start playing a bass one day, thanks to Mary Luce, our music director. Mm -hmm. But that is something that is really, really strong and connects with everybody that comes through that door. Yeah. They know right. we have a good music program, and they're not going to sit here and be bored by some person trying to sing, like me. <laughs> Well, you sing very well with your guitar. It's, you know, if we really want to stir the pot, Daniel and I will do a duet and just scare the life out of everybody. <laughs> then the church will be empty. That's, that's, that's right. <laughs> Head for the doors. <laughs> well, we certainly, like all churches right now, have our challenges, but we, we have so many strengths. and. And I pray that each of you will take time to look at the strengths of our faith community. And Daniel, you said something earlier that, that really resonated with me because it's happened when I've traveled in other parts of the country, I mean, in some pretty remote areas. And you'll come through a little town, a little, a little village almost, and you'll see a small wooden structured church. And it will say on the front of it, Christ United Methodist Church or Faith United Methodist Church, or St. Paul's United Methodist Church. And there, we know there is a community of faith that we are connected to. Yes. And when you think about 40,000 United Methodist churches in this country, that's a lot of churches. Yes. And we're connected, we're connected theologically, and in terms of many of our social programs and agendas, in terms of our common goals, and we're all connected to our own district, our own annual conference, and to the national church and to the global church, which is doing things all over the world. Yes. That's the power of connection. Is it perfect? No. Yes. But we work together in our imperfection. Yes. And as John Wesley once said, the Christ in me will not fight the Christ in you. We need to get along. We need to continue to do ministry together, even in tough times. Amen? Amen. Amen. Daniel, read for us the Lord's Prayer there. Have us join with you there. Let us in gratitude and thanksgiving join together in saying the prayer that Jesus taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Bruce, we thank you for being with us today. It's been Thanks my pleasure. Thanks for joining us. It's been my it pleasure. It has been a pleasure. And um, we look forward to more sessions like this with you down the road. <laughs> I'm here. Okay. You I, know what I, I, I know you are. Next I time, am here. I next am time here. we're going to invite you to bring your guitar. Oh, oh okay. that would be interesting. That would be nice. <laughs> it would. <laughs> and you can, you can down your hat and, and play uh, and, and sing a song for us. Okay. Pastor Daniel and I are going to lead us in our concluding benediction. Now please receive God's blessing. Depart to serve, strengthened by the Holy Spirit. Use the wisdom, faith, and knowledge that you have received on this day. We cannot simply rest in God's care or keep silent. The love of God must be lived and shared. So go forth with praise on your lips. The steadfast love of God will light your paths. We want to offer light and hope to others. Daily, we will seek inspiration for this joyous task. Reach out 
as listening, caring, healing people. Your love will become a miracle for someone in need. We pray that God will keep us open to further learning. Let our humble witness attract others to Christ. Amen. And amen. Go in peace, my friends. We'll see you Sunday morning.